Hello, and welcome to the next episode of Kale's Travails. Um, we're going to be on script this time because, to be honest, I didn't take the time to take notes today. It's been a wild day, start to finish, so let's start at the start. Um, getting started for my first day of walking did not go as well as planned, I gotta be honest. I had everything, you know, all sectioned off, so all I had to do was put the last things in bags, get dressed and roll out the door. None of that went as efficiently as planned. Then I do actually walk out the door, the Wi-Fi cuts off, and it turns out that some of the things that I thought were um, sort of inherent to an app, or it didn't need internet for, were internet features. So all of a sudden now I don't have a way to get onto the Camino anymore. I mean, I have a guidebook, but it's not quite the same. So luckily, I, they have this option to download some of the information. So I used one phone as a hotspot for the other phone, um, long story, and downloaded because, never mind, we'll just say long story, and downloaded all the maps. So these are downloading while I'm walking because I got started right before sunrise. I wanted to get out while the weather was cool. It was in the 50s this morning. Beautiful, like amazing. I got super blessed with my first day of weather. Even when I got up into the 70s, there was often a breeze. It was it was actually pretty magical weather-wise. But anyway, so now I'm out on the street and things are kind of uploading. I don't know if you can hear the rain. I was going to film this outside, but then a rainstorm came through. Maybe you can see it. Yeah, you can see it there. So, um, rain. Anyway, um, <laughs> sorry, squirrel. So I get going, the maps are downloading. I'm trying to juggle two phones. I'm trying to figure out where I'm going. I've got the book. I've got two phones. I'm like, oh my God. And then I'm thinking to myself, I can go a little ways before I eat. I don't usually eat first thing in the morning. I made it probably less than a mile when I was like, I don't feel good. And if I don't eat something, I'm going to die. So I just pulled over on a bench within like the first 20 minutes, half an hour, less. And, uh, and ate some leftover food from yesterday's dinner. And then I kept going. And so now we're heading out of Salamanca. The apps have finally started working. Thank God, because the way markings in Salamanca are actually not very good. In fact, this whole phase, this uh, stage, they call them, at um, uh, I think in Spanish, it wasn't as well way marked as I was thinking it would be. And so I'm really glad that I have these other ways to get to where I was going. So now I'm leaving Salamanca and I was like, God, this is, this is kind of hard. And then I reach about the two mile mark. In fact, if you've seen my Instagram, I took a video of like, hey, there's Salamanca and there's where I'm going. It turns out the whole first two miles were uphill. The whole first two miles were uphill. Those of you who know me well know hills are my nemesis. So that was rough. Um, but then when it leveled out a bit, I was like, oh my goodness, I'm cruising. Um, in fact, the, <laughs> the thing from Lord of the Rings that Pippin sings, home is behind the world ahead. I like couldn't stop thinking that. Salamanca, my starting point behind, everything else in front of me, it was kind of cool. So now I'm grooving, I'm feeling better. I get to about mile four and I'm like, woo, can do. Get to about mile five and I'm like, all right, halfway through the day. Mile six is where I think I saw the snake. I saw a snake and it was on the side of the road between like the road and like the ground. So where I was gonna walk. And I was like, if that snake tries to like leap out and get me, it's not great. Turns out the snake was dead, so everything was fine. Anyway, mile six, I start to slow down a little bit. And then mile seven, I was like, oh, this hurts, this hurts. So I pulled over for a snack um, in this tiny, tiny town. Least friendly bartender ever. I think he would have been happier to give me poison than food. He did not kill me, but it still wasn't my favorite. For those following Insta, that's also where that super cute cat was. There were like eight straight cats, all kind of loitering around the bar. It was cute for me, but clearly the guy who owned it did not like it. Um, continued on and you know, the day's getting hotter and I was just, I was tired. It was my first day out. I haven't trained in the past couple weeks because getting life sorted. Um, so it was getting harder around mile eight and then into nine, I was like, oh, you have to keep going. There aren't, there's nowhere to sit, right? I'm out in like the plains. There's no one, as I've told some of my other friends, no one's gonna come get you, so you have to get there. So I get there and as I'm walking, I'm like, listen, body, you're doing great. When we get there, you will not have to walk another step, okay? We're just gonna get there, we're gonna sit down, we're gonna put our feet up, we'll take a hot shower, it's gonna be amazing. I get here and I get to the albergue, which is where I'm filming this from, and there's nobody here. So I call the phone number posted 
And the guy picks up and he speaks Spanish very quickly and I'm not understanding and he's getting frustrated. And I was like, I'm at your albergue and there's nobody here and I have a reservation. He's like, oh, entiendo. Um, nobody's there because they didn't clean it yet because something went wrong with the cleaning person. I work at a restaurant, why don't you come to the restaurant? And I figured it would be right here, like right where the albergue is. No, I mean, it was only a half a kilometer, but nonetheless, when I looked at that on the map, I was like, well, body, apparently I lied and I'm sorry. Um, so put my pack back on, head on over there. I was there for a couple hours just waiting and there was no Wi-Fi, so I couldn't, you know, start doing research for tomorrow and other useful things. But while I was there, I met two other peregrinos. So there was a couple who was sitting at a table. They're probably in their late 60s to early 70s. And they are, they started further back. No, maybe they started in Salamanca too. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. They only spoke Spanish. As you all know from my previous post, my Spanish is not great. But nonetheless, they decided to speak to me and I did my best. And actually, they got kind of adorably protective. They're like, you know, Spain is very safe, but... As a woman alone, don't trust strangers. <laughs> I was like, thank you for the advice. I promise that I won't go off with any strangers. Um, so we chatted for a bit. Turns out they're staying at my hostel. Um, we all made our way back to the hostel. It was finally clean. And I met these two other people, two other peregrinos, also in their 70s, also started in Salamanca. For both of those couple, well, the second one's not a couple, it's two friends. But for all four of these people, this is like their fourth, fifth, sixth Camino. Apparently this is just a thing you do. Um, so the guys that I met are from France. One of them speaks English, the other does not. And they invited me out for a drink with them, it's Jacques and Michel, and they're lovely. And it was literally the whole time, like me talking to Jacques, and Jacques talking to Michel, and Michel talking to Jacques, and Jacques talking to me. I felt kind of bad. He was getting uh, like mentally tired from the effort, but we had a good time. We had a couple drinks and then we went and got groceries because tomorrow there is nowhere to stop for lunch. And if I start early, there's nowhere to get breakfast. So I got fruit, bread, and cheese. Um, and I hope that's enough or else, well, I'll tell you more about that tomorrow. Um, so we went there, but actually when we went to the like tiny food store, they don't sell bread. You have to go to the bread store. So we walked to the bread store with the woman who runs the bread store. And oh my God, when you walked in, it just, it smelled like heaven. It, I didn't want to leave. It was amazing. Um, then we walked back. The gentleman went out for dinner, invited me to join, but I just really wanted a nice, long showers. That's what I did. Nice long shower. Um, and I guess that cuts you up to now. Since then, I started packing and repacking for tomorrow. You know, you have to hand wash your clothes. So my clothes are washed and hanging. I would have them out on the line, but it's raining. So maybe if the rain passes, which it looks like it's slowed down. By the way, I have a window this way, so I'm not looking. Anyway, um, maybe when the rain stops, I'll be able to put it on the line. For now, they're just kind of like hung up willy-nilly around my room, which I'm sharing with the two gentlemen because this is literally like a hostel style albergue. So me, Jacques, and Michelle are all chilling tonight. And tomorrow I'm going to uh, Cubo de Vino. It's a little bit further than today. So today was uh, like 10.3 miles, tomorrow's 12.4 or something. Then the real question is, what do I do the following day? Because both of these Couples in their 70s, I keep saying couples, duos, both of these duos in their 70s are going all the way to Zamora the following day. And that's like 21 miles. And I don't think I'm here for it. But if I don't do the 21, I'm only going eight miles, which feels muy pequeño, very little. Uh, I guess we'll see how tomorrow goes, see how the body adjusts, see where I'm at eight miles into that 21 mile journey. Um, which means I won't actually reserve my hostel ahead of time, which will be the first time I'm not reserving. So, cross your fingers and toes for me. Again, tomorrow is only to Cuba Divino where there's nothing between me and it. No grocery stores, no food stores, no bars, no nothing. You leave here and you walk until you get there. So, uh, yeah. Day one done. Day two, first thing in the mañana. Thanks again for tuning in. Catch y'all later. Bye.